Hey guys, welcome back to another vlog. Who is she wearing makeup? Wearing eyeshadow? Not even sure if it looks that good. Wearing a matching lemon tracksuit because I am Pat Butcher. Um, thought I'd start a new vlog today because I'm feeling good. Having some continued birthday celebrations, going to the pub a bit later for an hour to have one beverage before I feel too tired and have to come home. Um, but I wanted to start a new vlog because why not? Um, that my house is looking like a beautiful funeral parlor. I've got a suspicion that these might be, actually no, maybe they're not peonies. I think they're like the double Dutch tulips, which is so stunning. For my gorgeous friends, and I got another bouquet in here. Don't mind the food shopping. <laughs> my friend delivered these last week. Just looking like a flower party, which you guys know, they are an essential to my bookstagram pictures, so I really need to buy some for a while. So I'm gonna put these all in vases. trying to brag or anything but it's 8 30 on a tuesday i'm wearing normal clothes can you see the shirt it's not a tracksuit can you see my shorts i mean they are actually a toweling material but it's a real outfit i like woke up and was like i'm gonna put on real clothes today i'm not gonna lie guys i feel like close to a million dollars um so i'm just gonna share that joy with you right now got brekkie eating my favorite gluten-free cereal but here's a picture of it, can't bother to get the box. <laughs> it's so good. If you like maple syrup, this is the bomb. I think you might be wonky. At this point you're always wonky and I'm kind of over it, so maybe that's my um what's it called? Forgotten the word. Unique selling point. USP. Business studies A level who? Um welcome back to another vlog. I think I've said hi already. But then I went and had a belated birthday celebration this weekend. Wait. Thank you, body, for participating. Had three alcoholic beverages. 
I'm really proud of myself because I feel like I paced really well. My friends are just like, darling, darling, what kind of word is that? They're, you know, so understanding and so on board with my physical and mental capacity to spend time with people, which is amazing. But I feel like I didn't push myself. I didn't try and mask when I was feeling unwell. And I sat outside, I got sun, I chatted. I took myself for breaks when I needed. The only thing I didn't manage to do was there was like quite long queues for the loo. I didn't bring my chair because we got like there and then we were sitting down the whole time and it's on shingles because it's on the beach, the place where we went for a drink. That's why. Um, I didn't bring my chair, but the queue for the loo was really long. And I didn't ask anyone to go in front. My friend, I held onto my friend's arm, which was fine. But um, I don't know, I haven't really navigated that space yet. I think I might get a walking stick. I was also talking to my friend about this. There's some quite cool walking sticks you can get now. Just as I, I just felt like, I, I find it quite hard from like going from sitting for a while to then having to stand. Like my legs get quite uneasy. Um, I think it's a lot about muscle memory as well because I've been like majority bed bound for quite a few months now that um, I just need to like get back into the swing of things. But yeah i didn't do much reading which is fine because i had such a good time proud of my body proud of myself it's all coming up aces uh yesterday was monday i had one university thing and then i realized how tired it was but i wasn't as like flawed as i thought i was going to be after the weekend which was good but mentally i was exhausted um i had like quite a lot of body pain so I sort of stood in my pajamas did the university lecture I had to see and then kind of chilled for the rest of the day and I started listening to an audiobook um a fiction audiobook the revival of Opal and Nev Grace reviewed this ages ago and I knew I would love it on audio because it's full cast um I'm really particular about the fiction that I listen to on audio I find it really hard to grasp there is a video I feel like I recorded a video about fiction audiobooks then I hated it because I was quite ill the day I made it and then never put it up. So I do need to re-record that for you. But um, this is like in a similar vein to Daisy Jones and the Six. And if you listen to that or read that when it came out to Jenkins Reid, I just really like it. It's sort of like The Archers, like you're listening to a, a radio play and um, I'm loving it so far. It's perfect for like days i couldn't really watch tv yesterday because i felt unwell so um like an audio and then all the audio i'm listening to heavy and i finished sitting pretty and i kind of wanted a break from reading um disability memoir so yeah absolutely loving it it's the story of like a 70s pop band like a not even pop i don't really know what music i haven't really said yet <laughs> only like three chapters in um and it's like in an interview screenplay kind of set up different voices for different people we've met opal and her sister pearl and we've met um nev he's british opal's american and it's sort of like how they came to be a famous band i don't know if it's based on any band like daisy and the six is loosely based on Fleetwood mac but I'm not sure if this is based on anything. What else is new? It's Tuesday, which means, oh, it's treatment day. So Tom's driving me there later. On the way, I'm going to put two books in the post for my gorgeous friend, Siska. If you guys don't follow her and her Instagram handles, and they read, this is her profile, and she started doing these little IGTV vlogs. She is a fellow sickie, and I just love her so much. And can't wait to be able to meet her in real life um <laughs> anyway i'm posting her how to be autistic by charlotte and me one of her siblings is autistic and we were like chatting about asd and stuff and i said i would lend her my copy of this because it's gorgeous and then um i bought her a copy of disability visibility i was gonna post her my copy and then i was like became really attached to my copy for some reason so yesterday when i was feeling really ill i went through this new copy I bought her from Blackwells and underlined all the matching bits of mine, which is probably really lame. And I like, inscribed it for her. I know she'll appreciate it. 
and like all the bits that spoke to me in my illness because she lives with chronic pain and similar things so I feel like the bits that spoke to me will maybe speak to her too so I'm gonna put those in the post for her another day with the same lunch I've probably already vlogged and the same essay my life is a groundhog day right now, but damn, my sandwich looks good. Me taking all the credit as if Tom doesn't make these sandwiches for me. Morning, folks. We had a bit of a rough night here. Um, had treatment yesterday and felt really quite rough. Afterwards, like, also extremely hungry, which sometimes I get this, like, ah, sorry, I'm just looking at that spade hand on my wrist. Um insatiable hunger that I can't like nothing will fill it um I need to actually ask my practitioner if it's a symptom of something because it just like comes on really suddenly like I had two dinners last night lads which is fine I'm not like mad about it but it's just like even after that I could have still eaten more anyway I just came on here to show you the sickest gadget and I'm not a gadget girl um that one of my friends got me for my birthday it's like I don't know if this is the best way to show you, but it's, it was called like a gooseneck. I'll try and get them to send me the link. And it's like this. It clips onto your bedside table, or if you have like a metal bed frame, you could um, clip it onto there. Um, it's not like the most attractive thing I've ever seen, but my friend did like shape it very nicely. Um, and it holds your iPad, or this bit's like um, adjustable, so it fits your phone, it fits my Kobu. I put on my Instagram picture of it with my Kobu in it, and people were like, oh my god, that's so cool. It's just like a third arm basically for bed, but it's so nice. Like, um, we were watching telly on it, or like sometimes it's really hard to like prop things up. Or this morning I was so tired I had my phone in it, and then I could like just text with one finger. Um, it, I don't know if that like seems extra for some people, but I have like a lot of wrist and joint pain. Or even if you don't, like I honestly think it's so clever for just watching telly or holding your Kindle. So yeah, so into that. And my friends got it for me for my birthday, which is like so thoughtful. Um. So yeah, just thought I'd pop in and tell you I'm into it. Oh, and I'm also like 13 chapters into the revival of Opal and Le Nev. I'm really enjoying it. It's like kind of hard to follow. There's a lot of different characters, but I've sort of got the gist so far that we're like just backtracking to them. Sort of like um, Opal first joining the band and then um, her like not really know what she's doing, but she's got this amazing voice. And then we find out from like really early on that one of I think it's the drummer dies in a like a racially motivated attack and um we hear from his daughter which is really interesting um but yeah I'm really enjoying it so far I feel like it's the kind of book where I won't really have that many updates on it because it's like a very plotty not much to think about sort of but um I'm really enjoying it so far and I think I'll pick up a new physical book or ebook today DS building work in the background, but I'm catching up on Sage's vlog. And then last night I had a read in. If you guys don't watch Sage, Sam, um, what are you doing? So They're amazing. We don't really have similar bookcases at all, but I just love their little cottage life. They have a beautiful baby called Otto, and I just get a lot of joy from watching their videos. So if you don't, then what are you doing? Get on it, guys. <laughs> I just came from the loo and Tom <laughs> Nasha on the computer. What do you have to say for yourself? Um, I think he's one of the all-time <laughs> greats, if I'm honest. Do your impression. Of Nasha. <laughs> no, I'm telling it's the madness. Nasha? Bye, face. Where are they from? Don't know, up north somewhere. Oh no, I hope we didn't offend Grace. Grace was sorry. <laughs> no, they're definitely not Geordie. Oh my god, is that a spider? Just your favourite bookstagrammer coming at you using her gorgeous flowers that you saw in the start of the video. Aren't these stunning? Stunning, who am I? My mum. Um, take a photo of this gorgeous proof I've got. I just saw the yellow and thought yellow on yellow. And yellow trousers today. Tom has made this really good crispy gnocchi. I will link the recipe. It's Max the Manor. If you guys follow him on Instagram, he does great like vegan zero waste cooking, but it's not annoying. Um, and you like bake it in the oven. We didn't make the gnocchi ourselves, obviously, because we just aren't those kind of people. <laughs> um, 
that is gluten free, the gnocchi we bought, but obviously you can do it with whatever you like and bake them in the oven and it's so good. That's the gnocchi chat, sorry. Oh, I'm vlogging a bit of book metal. Not great. I have my hair needs a wash, but I'm just don't not prepared to spend spoons on that right now because uni work is kicking my butt. Um, I got a book in the post, I'm Afraid of Men by Vivek Shara. I ordered this ages ago and it was out of stock everywhere and I got it on Bookshop and it just um, came into like from back order. It's a slim little thing and Vivek is talking about their experiences as a trans artist, how masculinity was imposed on her as a boy and how it continues to haunt her as a girl. As we know, I'm very interested in toxic masculinity, the patriarchy, all those kind of questions and it's looking at um, like I guess part memoir and also like a blueprint for the future and how we can engage so it says it's called I'm afraid of men and then the back says men are afraid of me it's a really beautifully produced book you can hear Tom in the background he's opening one of my last birthday presents he got me some new mugs we know that I love to collect my ceramics these were made by an artist in Manchester they're really cool I'm really excited to, to look at them let's hope they arrived in decent condition oh yeah, packed in there tight. Better by Katie, Diana, Nelson. They're smaller than I thought they were going to be. Does I that make you angry? No, I just never checked the measurements of mugs, so... Oh my god, they're adorable! Um, they've got this sick double handle. Yeah, they are smaller than I thought they were going to be, I won't lie. It's quite a small cup of tea. Do you think? Do I think they're small? Yeah. Yeah. But they're really cute and I got a matching one in blue. I think, I mean, I imagine they're going to be not the dishwasher proof. I think that if you make like a pot, pot of yeah, that's tea, pots they're, of tea. they're good. We love our pot. Plus, I feel like we quite regularly have pots of tea as opposed to individual mugs. Yeah, there's the matching ones. So they're like handmade, the bottom bit is matte, and then the top is glazed, and the handles are glazed. Aren't they amazing? Samaya, if you're watching, click away or like skip forward 30 seconds. I'm about to show people your Ramadan present and. You're just going to ruin it for yourself, although I already told you what one of them are. But anyway, if you're not Samaya, continue watching. I'm ordering my friend's Ramadan gifts. Um, we are book readers, and I know she gets stressed when I buy her, like, give her books, because she she's like, I can't keep up. So for her Ramadan present, I'm buying her books that are coming out later. So they're, like, the pre-orders, and I'm just going to send her a card with, like, pictures of, like, books on their way. This one, um, cut from the same cloth, is a collection of essays about um, British Muslim women, and I am sending it because one of our wonderful booktube, book-own people, um, Sophia Reading, it has an essay in it, which is really cool. And then the reset is by the author that wrote Slay and Helene, and it's about work-life balance. And I know, I just change how I work and live. Simone is very interested in in that idea. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like people are really interested in other people's groceries. I know I am. My favourite is to watch people like grocery haul from other places. Like I would die to have a Trader Joe's. We do have Whole Foods, but it's just like not as good as the American Whole Foods. So I thought I would haul some of the food I got from the Sainsbury shop, which is quite fun. Some of this I can't actually eat, it's Tom's, but some of it I can slash I will eat on a day when I felt like breaking the rules, baby. Um, what should I tell you about? Got new yogurt, coconut collaborative vanilla. The they have a new flavour, the mango and passion fruit, and it is so good with granola. Got one of them, and Tom likes the plain one. We're a dairy free household, lads, so that's why we got that. Um, this was a Sainsbury's order. Sometimes we do Sainsbury's. Sometimes we do a cardo. When I was less sick, I used to go to Aldi, but um, the queues in our local one are like wild right now so I just can't do that at the moment and Audi and Lidl are the, 
the lanes are really narrow so they're like not wheelchair accessible anyway boring these vegan sausages the plant pioneers from sainsbury's the cumberland shroom dogs they're mushroom based oh my god they are to die for i love them so much i can only eat them like once every couple of weeks because mushrooms aren't like great for me but adore adore what else the same those spray these frozen burgers which are so cheap the indian inspired lentil quarter pounders with sweet potato spinach and green lentils they're like maybe two pounds for six or four and rate them a lot great in a burger or just like on top of a salad and these are criminally underrated from sainsbury's these are not gluten free i miss them a lot sweet chili cauliflower bites they're like deep fried um they came out in like the christmas range but they seem to still have them if you put these in a wrap with like rocket hummus a little bit of salsa um absolutely delicious they're like breaded mm, yum um what other boring stuff should i get oh another cauliflower shape thing is the bang bang cauliflower um but can we just talk about for one second that sainsbury substituted my um oh my god i can't remember but it was like some kind of frozen meal they substituted for vegan single cream like what what am i gonna do with that so i sent that back obviously um, oh, this was the cereal I was talking about, but they didn't have the maple syrup flavour, so they subbed it for this, the non-maple syrup one, which is still good and probably healthier. But this gluten-free cereal brand, hit them up, guys. Nature's path. We love it. What else did I get? Another granola. This deliciously the yellow one. So good, but it's like £4. So sometimes I do half this, half this, and then I can make this box last longer. Because if Tom gets his hands on this, this is like full breakfast for him, which is just too expensive for this household but also offended by the new delicious yellow branding wow what else it's fun cashew nuts rocket loads of veg a new basil plant i'm gonna try and keep alive um and these have been out of stock for ages but they're finally in stock poodles um and a note about pre-packaged things lots of people like to get on their environmental high horse i was one of those people that used to think that packaged vegetables were a waste of time and for lazy people but i've learned my ableist ways i could not i can't even peel a um butternut squash with my hands let alone um like turn one into noodles like that would just be so painful and i just wouldn't eat them so think about that when you complain about plastic packaging of um pre-cut veg because like my grandma relies on it for she has um whatever old people hands i don't know she doesn't have any illness but like she can she gets my she gets veg like that that she puts in the microwave my mum has arthritis and uses it i use it um people lots of people with chronic illness who are high who have like fatigue as a symptom dexterity problems people with autism there's so many reasons why you would need things to be pre-chopped for you so let's cancel that ableist rhetoric around pre-sliced food that's my ramble. Hope you liked my food. Oh, no. Another day, another vlog. I'm starting on the sofa today to tell you that I started reading Diamond Hill by Kit Fan on my Kobu last night and I'm loving it so much. I don't know, like this and Opal and Nev at the same time is maybe like a lot of plot for me, but I think I just was like feeling quite burnt out on nonfiction and then I went on a memoir binge and like I don't know, I'm just really enjoying having both options at the moment. So Diamond Hill is about a ex-heroin addict turned monk who um, lives in Hong Kong and then spends time in Bangkok in Thailand. His um, like superior monk or the monk that trained him then passes away. So he moves back to Hong Kong to this area of Diamond Hill. It's at the turn of the 90s where Hong Kong is about to be given back to china from britain let me hope i've got that in the right order yeah um and they want to demolish this area of the city diamond hill that's like currently like a shanty town where the nunnery where this monk is living is in the back of and um one of the nuns at the uh nunnery is trying to do a deal with some of the police officers there's um some sex workers a lot about drugs and organized crime and trafficking and I find that all really interesting and if you read my newsletter a couple of weeks ago I was on a real um 
like YouTube rabbit hole of like um watching like Vice documentary and stuff about fentanyl and um like prescription drug use and then Empire of Pain is coming out which lovely Jalen gave me an audible credit for my birthday to buy that's like 18 hours on the Sackler family and the history of Oxycontin and how the opioid crisis hit off in America so yeah I'm really interested in like reading about drugs and such so yeah I'm loving Diamond Hill so Kit Fan is a is I think I believe is Honkanese but lives up north um I was talking to Grace about it it's published by Dialogue and yeah I'm just having a really good time at the moment reading it so that's my book update there quite random for me to read two fiction at once but I'm having a good time I might not have washed my hair in a long time guys but I just cleaned the flat to clean the fridge which was like bugging me for days like put away all my birthday stuff and I just feel 11 times better for doing that and I'm just really impressed with myself because I never have never have wow had a bad English I mean I haven't been able to stand to like do any kind of tidying or cleaning for a while now so I'm so impressed with my body and I just feel at peace. I had some symptoms come on straight afterwards, but I just took down, I didn't panic. I feel like I'm finally in the rhythm of healing from things, but also like accepting my limitations and the fact that they fluctuate, which is a, a constant battle. Well, not even battle, just like you're constantly recalibrating with yourself about what your level of activity can be and the payoff for doing those things and it's really hard to keep track of but yeah just thought I'd share that. I participated in household duties today and I feel good about it. If you didn't or if you saw yeah the haul I put up the other day of all the books I got um, in Bath on our trip a couple of people commented saying they wanted to see what Tom picked so I thought I would get him to show you here in the vlog. Oh Thomas! <laughs> Should I come over? Yeah. Um, if you guys didn't see that, I'll link it up in the cards, but take a seat. Hello. What books did you buy? Why did you buy them? Um, I bought... We're matching in grey today. One. The... Parable of the Sower by Octavia E. Butler. Tell them what your sitch is with that, because you wanted to buy something else, didn't you? Yes, I wanted to buy the first book in the... Xeno Genesis trilogy because um, one of my PhD supervisors um, yeah, recommended that, that it was useful for um, sort of thinking about climate change and uh, yeah, imagining alternative futures. Mm. So she's a sci fi writer, she dystopian. Is. Yes, but. Um, it's out so, of print. Yeah, particularly Octavia Butler and Ursula Le Guin as well. They are um, they're quite big source of inspiration for a lot of people writing in sort of um, environmental philosophy um, and that kind of thing. But the books I wanted to get from her are out of print. Yeah, they're being reissued at the end of this month, I think. Yeah, it was quite... And the sick. current covers are absolutely vile, so they better put new ones on. Fingers crossed. <laughs> um, so you got this one, which is... I Grace read this, I think, and liked it. Um, so you just wanted to get a start into her writing. Yeah, I thought I'd just give it a go, because I'm not normally a sci-fi person, really. No. So, um, yeah, I just thought I'd see if I got along with it. Okay, I was trying to care about it f for Tom and I can't... Who else did he tell you to read? Don't know, someone else. I wrote it down. You read one of them by them. They have the ugly SF Masterworks covers. Oh, we... Philip K. Dick. Yeah. Yeah, I've read one of his books. But, but there's many another years one. Ago. Mm -mm. Next up. Um, yeah, the next one uh, Islands of Abandonment. By Cal Flynn. By Cal Flynn. Um, about life in post-human landscapes uh so for my phd again i'm very interested in yeah these sorts of um these newly emerging relationships between uh humans and the places they inhabit and how 
Yeah. And how these new things come into being. <gasps> it's got pictures. We love pictures. So this is non-fiction, right? Looking at places that humans no longer live. The most yeah. polluted areas or the ravaged. Forbidden areas of France, the mining regions of Scotland. Oh, interesting. I think, did, did you... This was like a cover by-ish. Yeah. You hadn't heard of it before we went into... No, no. I, yeah, I was intrigued because... Um, yeah, sometimes there's a tendency to look at climate change stuff solely in terms of ruination and all of these sorts of things, but I'm quite interested in, um, yeah, I don't know, decentering those sort of Human. anthropocentric narratives mm. to see how these kinds of places that have been ruined per se are being reclaimed by, um, Natural. yeah, I don't know, different sort of species like these birdies on the cover and the last one you actually didn't buy it that much because we like bought i bought a lot obviously for my birthday that tom and my mum bought for me but he will read like most of the fiction that i buy won't you i will yeah um and then the last one is i think this just came out actually mm -hmm. uh come join our disease by sam byers yeah you got that in toppings um, yeah and it's yeah it sounds really interesting it's about this uh homeless girl and like about um i think like waste yeah like living on, like, on a, a waste trading land. estate in like leighton or something yeah um, it's indie published who publishes uh, it faber oh yeah okay um but yeah i saw so, so to i haven't read any of his other work but um I, there was an interview with him on one of my favourite music publications, uh, Shout Out to the Quietus. <laughs> um, and yeah, I, so I read that and uh, his work sounded really interesting and I was also looking for uh, Perfidious Albion as well. But I decided, and I did find it actually, but then I decided to read this one first and go back to see if I get on with him. Interesting. So a tech company angling to raise its philanthropic profile offers her a job and a flat, but she must document her process on Instagram to show that anyone can be productive and perfect. Oh, so it's going to be about also like good, good tech and that yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, I think it'd be quite an interesting satire. Yeah, so. I would be interested in yeah. this. It, like the the theme sounds a tiny bit like the heart goes last from Margaret Atwood and the circle by Dave Eggers, which is about that like new tech blending product like productivity new age like morality we can all be good and productive citizens vibe i'm into it i hope you like it because i would be very keen to read this yeah i'm looking forward to reading it a subtle chronicler of contemporary malaise it sounds like you <laughs> anyway thanks for joining us tom you can go eat your sweet potato now Having a really productive day, day, guys, and I'm loving that for myself. Tom just bought me strawberries and went to the bulk store and picked up these little date. They're called Snickers, but we're kidding ourselves if they really are Snickers. They're like date peanut things. Anyway, I'm working on a presentation that I have to give next week for university. It's like a hundred percent weight of my module, so I thought, what's the best thing to do? But distract my lecturer with fancy slides so that's what I'm spending my time doing also it like uses less brain power right now like when I'm trying to take a rest um than doing actual like writing and thinking about teaching standard TS5 but I thought I'd just show you that I'm writing about it's a presentation I spoke about the other day about autism in girls and policy change and of course i had to feature a slide of books i've read this one here absolutely like absolutely one of my favorite memoirs as well and uh, these are two more that i like plan to read for my professional development but they're both um books about autism and women so that's what i'm working on what book are you reading Havana Year Zero by Carla Suarez. Very nice. This is Tom somehow. We're enjoying Friday afternoon on the beach.
guys, I'm gonna sign off the vlog. Oh, had a rough night sleep wise, so I um I'm in bed, which is fine. Oh, but the lighting's quite nice. I've got you in my little holder thing that I um got showed you earlier in the vlog. I finished Diamond Hill late last night while I couldn't sleep and I absolutely loved it. Guys, do not sleep on this book if you are a plotty person if you enjoy a historical context like a recent historical context outside of um white western gaze it's really interesting the idea of religion and this like second life you get if you save yourself um the different identities we take on depending on our surroundings it was just really really well done i really really enjoyed it, it was fast paced it was a lot about yeah, like, duality of identity, so this nun is, like, they're trying to save this nunnery, basically, that's built in Diamond Hill, which is, like, a shanty town that, um, Chinese businessmen are taking over to build, like, luxury apartments, and they're, like, relocating the people that live there, essentially, it's gentrification, but it was really, um, this nun, the Iron Nun, who's, like, the leader, or, like, the, the main nun at the nunnery is sort of, like, in cahoots, and, you're not really sure of anyone's motive and there's a, uh, like an organised crime ring that are part of it with which this young girl runs is like one of the leaders for and it's about sort of like how all these people in different like walks of life in this small suburb of Hong Kong how they interact with each other and also interact with their dreams and their these like you know these arbitrary lines of morality that we draw for each other um I just thought it was really clever and there was a really interesting author's note at the end about use of um, like Cantonese and the uh, language translations that were in it, which I really enjoyed as well. But yeah, would really recommend if you're like a reader of, not even necessarily, it's not really thrillery because it doesn't have like a, there are twists and turns, but they're not necessary in the traditional formulaic sense of when I think about thrillers. But um, I just really, really enjoyed it. And I think a lot of people would as well like it was a perfect palette cleanser it was plotty enough to keep me up at night but it wasn't too taxing on the brain but yeah I really loved it so that's my final thoughts on the books I read in this video I'm still reading Opal and Nev and I probably will for a little bit longer hope you guys enjoyed watching and I'll be back next week with another video bye